Good afternoon, everyone. In today's video, we're looking at an extremely active severe weather pattern ahead for the US. We're going to start off by looking at the GFS model 500 millibar wind speed. And again, what we're looking at is wind speed. And this is 500 millibars up in the air. This is typically what we look at when we look at long range severe weather events possible in the near future. So as you can see, we're looking at about March 22nd around 6 p.m. or so. It's overall just March 22nd. As you can see, we're having a dip in this wind. This is the jet stream. So as you can see, the jet stream is starting all the way up here, all the way up here in the north and taking a massive dive here into the south, south southwestern U.S. As you can see, it goes into Mexico, all the way down there in Mexico, and then starts to up and starts to go up. As you can see, it goes up in Texas and goes up in uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri. Illinois, Indiana, we're seeing uh, upwards of a uh, 90 mile per hour winds here, or I think these are the knots. Yeah, these are knots. So 90 knots here of wind, 500 millibars, and this is a massive dip here. So what this means is if you do have that massive severe potential for around the March 22nd period, uh, and this is going to be for next week. So early next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that's when we could see there's some of that severe weather. We're going to look at the Storm Prediction Center outlook. Uh, even day seven and day eight, which is over a week out. We rarely see outlooks issued on that, but we did get issue. We did get outlooks issued on day seven and day eight. So we'll look at that in a second, but let's see how long this lasts. So we're heading throughout March 23rd. So this is going to be 16th of March 23rd. And that dip is still going to be there. So there's still going to be that severe potential uh, down here in the south for March 23rd. Let's move forward even more to March 24th. And as you can see, there is still quite the dip. It is no longer over here, but we still have a, quite the dip here for the severe potential for possibly March 24th as well. Mostly along the east coast where we could see that uh, severe potential for March 24th. But that'll probably be the last day of that dip uh, making that severe weather potential. Let's start off by looking at the day 4 outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. And this is again day 4. So this is going to be for Friday. And for Friday we're going to have some severe potential over here in the southern southeastern US. A 15% chance for severe weather. Let's go to day five. So Saturday, uh, the potential is going to be too low. So really not much for Saturday. Let's go to Sunday. Not much again. But once we get to sat day seven, which is going to be Monday, as you can see, we have a large 15% area uh, for severe weather, which means we are going to be seeing a possibly significant chance for severe weather across portions of Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Oklahoma around that day. Also for day eight, like I said, that dip is still going to be there. So we're going to have another severe chance for uh, Tuesday uh, uh, around the Dixie Alley region. So you're really going to have to watch out for this. And we don't have a day nine outlook, but I do think they're going to issue uh, for day eight tomorrow, which is going to be for Wednesday, as they are going to issue a severe chance for around the East Coast region, or maybe a little, uh, or the confidence maybe a little low, so they may issue it uh, earlier, uh, later than that. But I do think there's also going to be another severe chance for the East Coast on uh, Wednesday. For, day, for today's severe weather outlook, as you can see, we have a small slight chance for severe weather across portions of Central Florida. Also a marginal risk for isolated severe storms in the dark green. For tornado threat, is going to be very low, only a 2% risk for tornadoes, so a brief tornado can't be ruled out. Wind risk, we have a 15% chance for 60 mile per hour winds. And hail is really not a big hail chance, it already happened this morning. So main threats are going to be that 60 mile per hour winds and uh, possibly a brief tornado or two. Let's look at the day three outlook. As you can see, you have a slight risk for severe weather across portions of Louisiana, Texas, and Mississippi. <laughs> also a marginal risk around that, which is a level one out of five. And the uh, slight risk is, of course, a level two out of five on the severe weather scale. Around a 15% chance for severe weather. Let's look at the super solid composite for friday when we have the for thursday when we do have that slight risk in effect for portions of these areas here as you can see for supercell composite this is kind of the risk for 
as the, the kind of the probability probability for supercells developing at a current point so as you can see we have orange and we have some a little bit of red there in this kind of cold front region we have that low pressure of course right up here it's a very simple severe weather setup that we're talking about on thursday we have a low pressure system right here cold front dipping right there warm front lifting north bringing you know, a lot of that moisture northward and a lot of that heat really fueling those storms and that cold front of course triggers all of those storms along the dry line a very simple severe weather setup so that's why we're going to have a decent risk for those supercells especially in eastern texas once again as you can see let's move forward even more that supercell risk is going to exist into the overnight hours across portions of eastern texas into louisiana on friday those storms also may even exist in the early morning hours as you can see across portions of the southeast where they have that slight risk in effect uh, for day four which is going to be friday uh, for the afternoon risk of supercells across portions of alabama georgia and the panhandle of florida will have that supercell risk now storm risk is going to have a, a break for a couple of days until we get to monday of course as you can see we have a, a decent chance for supercells across once again texas on monday let's move forward even more uh, as you can see let's uh, you, you get some of those reds once again on uh, monday this is going to be around 6 p.m on monday and you're still going to have a very large super cellular super cellular storm threat across portions of eastern of the eastern half of texas as you can see it pretty much diminishes over the uh, in the overnight hours until we get to tuesday as you can see it's 12 p.m of tuesday once again another super cellular threat very close to monday's uh, threat again in portions of eastern texas mostly in louisiana and arkansas mississippi as well for tuesday's threat but that's going to exist into the evening hours even into the overnight hours you may still see some of those storms and once we reach into now wednesday is not going to have a huge threat for those supercells but definitely a lot of storms are going to be in if uh, are going to be in portions of the uh, ohio valley on wednesday uh, and then we get to thursday here where it is not overall not going to be a big threat for supercells but there is again going to be storms for a lot of the southeastern u.s uh, for next week let's look at how much moisture is actually being lifted here into texas so we can get an idea of how these uh, how these storm how strong these storms are actually going to be this is going to be around when these storms start to fire and we get our, we are getting 70 fair near 70 fahrenheit in the eastern texas area especially those dark colors that are definitely 70 fahrenheit of dew points which is a lot of moisture that's going to be really fueling really fueling these storms and possible tornadoes down here in texas and louisiana let's go to tuesday where there's a definitely going to be even more moisture bringing up here into portions of texas and louisiana this may be the main day of next week which is again tuesday just because of all that moisture we're getting into those kind of purple colors where that's 71 fahrenheit dew point which is again a lot of moisture being lifted here for these storms from the gulf of mexico it's going to be very humid down here in the south so and you can definitely already tell that monday and tuesday is going to have those big storms it is still a bit far out to actually forecast these storms be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new and turn on post notifications. You won't miss a single update or live stream on a severe weather this storm season. Also, share this video with any friends or family that may want the latest updates on this upcoming massive uh, pattern ahead uh, with nonstop severe storms for the United States. But as always, stay safe.